Good day students, so welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this installment, we're going to be going over indirect proof, um, our first example or proof by contradiction. Don't forget to visit our website at mathcodeserve.com for access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. So for our first proof by contradiction or indirect proof, we are to prove that prove that um, the square root of 2 is uh, irrational. So this is what we are going to prove, okay? So let me go ahead and um, go over the game plan with you so you can um, know the, part, the logic that's guiding my, um, proof, my proof process, okay? So this is the plan. How do you prove by um, contradiction? What you do is you have your original statement P that you want to show that it's, that statement is true. So you're going to make a supposition. You're going to suppose, suppose not. Right? You're going to suppose that, suppose that um, not P is true. Your goal after making this supposition is to end with a contradiction. So end with a contradiction okay so that's a symbol for contradiction so ending up with a contradiction basically implies that not p is false so if not p is false then the negation of not p which is p must be true so if not p is false that implies that the negation of not p which is p is true all right, so that's this is basically the summary of how we're going to carry our proof um, by contradiction. All right, so let's go ahead and carry out our um, proof, the actual proof. So um, we're going to start with the proposition. P, let P be the proposition that root 2 is irrational. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, step one is we're going to suppose not, all right? Suppose not, and then we're going to suppose the negation of um, P, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to suppose that um, not, not P is true. So suppose... Um, not P is true. All right. So what is not P? That's the question. What is not P? If P is root two is not um, is irrational, then the negation of the proposition P is that root two is rational. Okay. So now that we've made our supposition, if we can end up with a contradiction of this statement, that means that our supposition is false and the original proposition is true, root 2 is irrational, all right? So now, can we end up with a contradiction um, as to the fact that root 2 is rational? That's the goal. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Now, since we're assuming that root 2 is um, rational, then um, root 2 is equal to P over Q for some integers, for some integers, P and Q, where Q is non-zero, or else would be undefined, where Q is non-zero, and this is really important, and the greatest common factor of P and Q is one. Another way of saying it is that, um, or you can say um, P and Q have what? Have no common factors. So we are just trying to express root 2 is as the simplest rational expression. Okay? Simplified completely. That's the condition that we're indicating here. All right? If two numbers are having completely reduced, all the common factors have been factored out, 
the only number that's common, the common factor of the two numbers is one. Okay, so that's the condition for um, for this situation that we're stating here. So for example, let's say you have 10, right? And then you want to express this as a ratio. 10 can be expressed as 20 over um, 20 over 2. But is this the reduced form? Is this does this fit this explanation, this representation right here? The answer is no. 10 can be reduced further, 20 over 2 can be reduced further into 10 over 1. In this case, um, the greatest common factor of these two numbers is, is 1, all right? So that's what we're talking about here. So we can make this um, statement. This is by definition of rational numbers, okay? So we can make this statement. Um, this is by definition of rational numbers. By definition of rational numbers. Now, we already made the supposition earlier that root 2 is rational, so we can apply the definition of rational numbers to root 2, okay? Now that we have this um, situation stated, if we are trying to carry out a further investigation of root 2 and violate any of these conditions for the definition of a rational number, then that tells us that root 2 is not rational, which means that it must be irrational. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We have root 2 is equal to p over q, by definition of rational numbers. Now let's go ahead and square both sides of our equation. Okay, so we square the right side and the left side, and that yields, um, what do we get? We get 2 over p square over q square. So we have 2 because square and squared cancel out equals p square over q square. If you multiply both sides by q square, you have 2q square equals p square. All right. So since we have this situation, 2 times an integer is equal to p square. What do we know here? Um, we can automatically conclude that um, p square is even. Okay. So p square is even, p square is even by definition, um, by definition of even numbers, all right? So how about we call q square, let's call it an integer. So let, let um, q square equals k for some integer k. All right, for some integer k. So since p square is even, we can express p square as p square equals 2k. All right. Now, um, if p square is equal to 2k, we know that p times p, using the properties of exponents, is equal to 2 times k. Now, let's take a look at this expression. Since the right side of this expression is 2 of this equation, sorry, is 2 times k, that automatically tells us that 2 divides um, the right side of this expression, okay? Because you have a 2 times k. So um, since 2 divides the right side of the expression, 2 times 2 times k, that implies that um, 2 has to divide p or 2 divides p the left side of the equation. So this is an equation, whatever goes on the right side has to go into the left side. Whatever divides the right side has to divide the left side also, okay? So, but p is equal to p, so if 2 is div um, divides p or p, 2 must divide p. So here, 2 divides p since p is equal to p. They're exactly the same number, so 2 has to go into both of them since they're both identical. All right? So since 2 divides both numbers, guess what that means? Um, P is also even by definition. All right? By definition of even numbers, P is even because 2 divides every even number. So since 2 divides P, P is also even. So by definition of even, P 
is equal to 2, let's use the letter m, for some integer m since um, p is even. It can be written in this form. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a, a substitution. How about we call this equation right here, equation number 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to substitute 2m for p in equation 1. All right, so let's go ahead and write that down. We're going to substitute, substitute 2m for p in equation 1. All right, so if we go ahead and make that substitution, we're going to have 2q squared is equal to, instead of um, p squared, is going to be 2m squared. Let's go ahead and expand this. If we expand this, we're going to have um, 2q squared equals 4m squared using the properties of exponents. Now we can divide both sides of this equation by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Um, let me work, let me split up my workspace so we can keep everything in view. Just going to continue my work on this side right here. All right, so if I divide both sides by 2, I will have um, q square is equal to 2m square. Now, since q squared is equal to 2m squared, we have q squared being expressed as 2 times some integer. So what does that tell us? It tells us that q squared is even by definition. Okay? And then as illustrated here, if, if the square of a number is even, then the root of that number is also even. Okay? So we can just recite, we can just state that. We don't have to do all this work again as shown earlier shown earlier if q square is even that implies that q is also even all right as we already showed over here so we know that q is also even so what is by definition if q is even that means that q can be written as 2n for some integer n. Okay, this is by definition of what it is to be an even number. All right, so this is what we have. So now, um, what do we know about p and q? So let's go ahead and write down the remark. Um, since, since p is equal to 2m, we show that here, and q is equal to 2n, we show that here, is their greatest common factor 1? The answer is absolutely not. We can see that 2 goes into both of these numbers, into p and q. So part of our proposition earlier, that the GCD of p and q is 1 is false. So the GCD for that again, the greatest common factor, the greatest common factor of P and Q is not equal to 1. That's a contradiction to the original statement earlier that we made here that the greatest common factor of P and Q is 1. Another way you can state this is, or P and Q have common factors. Okay, either we say that the greatest common factor is not equal to 1 or they have common factors. Remember we said it earlier here in our supposition that P and Q have no common factors. But here we have a situation that P and Q have a common factor, namely 2. Okay, so this is a contradiction. What does that mean? So since we arrive at the contradiction, not P is false, and the negation of not P, P is true. All right, so our conclusion, 
is that the statement P, which the proposition P, which is root two, is irrational, is true. All right. So we just put our box of accomplishment that complete completes our proof. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. Do feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. Um, and you can give us a thumbs up or like or favorite this clip if you liked it. More clips can be found on mark.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.